Hi, um, welcome everyone. My name is Rosalie Best. I am one of the peer trainers here at SELA, the Expanded Delivery Options Program. Um, I would like to start off by acknowledging that uh, SELA operates across Canada, and we acknowledge that um, there are traditional territories of all First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people. Um, for myself, I am on Treaty 1 territory, which is the traditional land of the Anishinaabe, Cree, Oji Cree, Dakota, and Dene peoples, and on the homeland of the Métis Nation. Um, all questions will be answered at the end of the webinar, um, but there is someone who is monitoring the chat, so if you're having technical issues um, and can access the chat, um, please put your questions in there and we'll try to um, be mindful if sound isn't working or if the video isn't working. Um, there's also um, uh, closed captioning turned on so that you will be able to uh, see the, um, what we're saying if you are hard of hearing. So um, CLI, just to give a little bit of a background, is um, an accessible library service providing books and other materials to Canadians with print disabilities. Um, but not everything that we mention here uh, in this presentation will be accessible through CELA. This is more of an overview of accessible reading and all of your options. And uh, now I'm going to let my coworkers introduce themselves, starting with my coworker Eve. Yes, uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Eve uh, Seguin. Um, I'm totally blind. Uh, to give you a little bit of background, I've been working uh, in the public service, uh, the federal government, for about 30 years in human resources and also uh, in um, technology. I was uh, the head of a technology center for employees with disabilities and federal public service. So obviously, I've always had um, an interest about technology and about how to make things more accessible for uh, persons with disabilities and uh, persons with uh, print disabilities in particular. And uh, now uh, to my colleague, Ioana. Hello, everyone. My name is Ioana Ganderber. I, am, uh, I was born in Romania, I lived in Germany, and now I live in Montreal. Um, I am blind since birth also, and uh, I'm a musician, but technology is my passion, and I often uh, co-moderate technology lists, and uh, I am a bit of a geek, and I'm always happy to share my experience in helping others when it comes to accessible technology. Okay, thank you. Um, and I just want to mention for the closed captionings, if um, you're finding they're in your way, you personally can um, turn them off on your end, or you can move them or make them smaller. Um, at the bottom of the screen, there are options to do that. Um, we, however, will be keeping them on. And um, for those who are having a hard time hearing us um, through their computers, sometimes if you call in, um, it will uh, help you to uh, hear audio better. Um, so we'll, now we'll move on. So our learning objectives today are what is a print disability? Um, what accessibility devices are available to you? What accessibility software and apps are out there? Um, different alternative formats? Sources of digital reading material and how to access them. So first things first, what is a print disability? A print disability is a learning, physical, or visual disability that prevents a person from reading conventional print. More specifically, a print disability can be a learning disability, which is an impairment relating to comprehension. A physical disability, which causes the inability to hold or manipulate a book. And a visual disability, which is either the severe or total loss of sight and the inability to focus or moves one eyes. And these would um, make people have a hard time using traditional print. So what are ways that we can access printed material? Um, access to the printed world can be achieved through various ways besides just a plain old um, traditional print book. Um, if you do have a pr traditional print book and you want to um, try using a magnifier, that is one way that you can access that. 
Um, you can either use a digital or a regular run-of-the-mill magnifier. You can ask to have your printed materials converted to audio or daisy books, uh, or to uh, a document that you can uh, read aloud uh, with a screen reader. Uh, you can scan printed materials to adapt and transform them into more accessible digital formats. And then you can add readers' notes to convey and describe images and graphics. That's particularly useful for people with um, low vision or no vision, um, and if they are wanting to read graphic novels or um, even children's books that are illustrated and things like that. So on to my colleague, Eve. Much, uh, Rosalie. Um, choosing the right uh, techniques or the right uh, technology might be a, a bit challenging and daunting, especially for someone that newly acquired a print uh, disability. Uh, there is no right way or wrong way, but whatever techniques work for you is uh, what you should be striving for. In order to determine that, well, you can consult uh, friends, colleagues, you can uh, talk to uh, rehab specialists, technology specialists, and then uh, try to make your determination based on uh, the advice that you're receiving. Um, the solutions that you will be adopting uh, will be based uh, on the type and degree of uh, the print disability that uh, you are having. And, um, also on the uh, type of uh, reading that you would like to do. Um, if, for example, you want to read a, read a couple of pieces of mail that are coming in uh, uh, to know what they are, well, it's not necessarily going to be the same technology you would use to read uh, scientific books or a uh, uh, document uh, in, the, in a work context. So. Uh, various technology exists to uh, uh, help you out in, uh, in that uh, 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 endeavor. And um, let's uh, talk a little bit about uh, equipment uh, that you can use to accomplish this. Uh, we will be mentioning some equipment by name, and it's not necessarily endorsement on our part, but it's to give you an uh, example. We base them in two broad categories, uh, mainstream devices versus specialized devices. The mainstream devices, such as uh, tablets, computers, smartphone, um, offer obviously uh, multiple possibilities. You can accomplish various tasks with them uh, reading included, but many other things. Um, but you have to attain a good comfort level uh, in order to uh, put, use them to their full uh, potential. Um, and it gives you access to multiple content, uh, Kindle books, Apple books, uh, EPUB, uh, you name it. And we will try to demystify some of that uh, throughout uh, the presentation. Um, although they can be difficult to master at first, it is a good idea to uh, keep going and uh, try to uh, get, uh, you know, familiar enough with them to be able to uh, attain uh, their full potential. Uh, the drawback on some of those uh, equipment, especially uh, tablets and smartphones, that they have flat screens, so it makes it difficult to learn at the beginning, but um, it's well worth it uh, afterwards. Um, now moving on to the specialized equipment, well, they, the main characteristic of those is that they have raised tactile buttons making it less of a learning curve uh, to, to, to use. Another factor also to keep in mind is that in most provinces, uh, they are subsidized equipment uh, so that cost is not as much an issue as with um, regular uh, commercially available equipment. 
Now let's talk a little bit about um, accessibility devices uh, for reading, but uh, through audio. Yes, you can listen to audio content and audio books. Um, one uh, interesting format to listen to audiobooks is the DAISY format. My colleague, uh, Joanna, will uh, actually give us a demonstration of that, but it makes it easier to navigate through uh, the book uh, when using uh, that format. Um, on the hardware side, uh, there are uh, different options. If we're looking at the DAISY players, you have the Victor uh, Trek, the Victor Reader Stream, the Stratus, Plextalk, and a few others. Um, and uh, the new kid on the block, if I <laughs> may call it that, Envoy Connect is right now being tested by Sila. Uh, this is a player that uh, is an audio player. It's not a full-fledged DAISY player. But in some situations, it might be quite uh, useful, uh, given its uh, cheap price, uh, to be using that as, a, as an alternative. Um, so uh, now to give you an example of uh, what a DAISY player sounds like, and looks like, we uh, will show you a DAISY player. Uh, which is the uh, Victor Reader Stream. Now for a brief demonstration of the, of the Victor Stream. Well, I just want to mention, if the video is a little bit quiet, um, please just turn up your volume. Unfortunately, we're not, we haven't had luck uh, turning up the volume on the video itself, so. For those of you who can't see it, on its surface, it has a telephone style keypad plus seven other buttons to accomplish different functions. For example, if I press the number one key, I will cycle through all of the available applications. Bookshelf. Sell a direct to player. Podcasts. 12. Pod Internet radio. 2. Playlists. References. 0. Files. Search on Wikipedia. Sell a direct to player. And back to sell a direct book. to player. I will now listen to an excerpt of a book. Chapter one. Houston, January 1973. Flat. At this point, if I press the six key, I will move to the next chapter. Chapter two. Manned spacecraft center. Chapter three. East and the four key would move me back one chapter at a time. Chapter two. To the moon. It is also possible to speed up the playback. Speed. Chapter one. Houston, January 1973. Flat. Flat as far as the eye can see. The plane had just ascended below cloud and the hazy humid South Texas air made the distances look shorter somehow. So this is a quick demonstration of the Victor Reader Stream. It also has a sleep timer function if you like to read at night before going to sleep. So that's a brief overview of uh, Daisy Player. Now to talk a little bit about uh, Braille displays and devices. Well, they come in uh, various sizes and shape and uh, number of Braille cells. And obviously uh, that has an impact on the price. Um, the main purpose of those uh, displays, um, it's either to use them to take notes locally, that is not being connected to a computer, or some other models, you can connect them to a computer and they, or a tablet or a smartphone, and they will provide a braille representation of the um, information that is coming up on the screen. Some of those devices are web-based uh, on the Android platform for most of them. And they will offer uh, both note-taking uh, that you can take on the go and then send to your computer when you 
come back home or at work and uh, do some further editing, or they will give you access to applications that have been especially developed by the companies that produces them, or you can use some of the applications available on Google Play Store, not all of them, but some uh, that are uh, compatible. And um, now we're gonna be looking uh, at two Braille displays side by side. One of them uh, is equipped with a QWERTY keyboard that is a regular size, full size keyboard. And the other model is equipped with a Perkins style keyboard based on the six dots, the space bar and the backspace and so on and so forth. And while we're looking at them, uh, just me, let me remind people that came in uh, during the presentation, the presentation is being recorded, microphones are muted, and uh, you can uh, type questions in the chat and we will answer them at the end. Now I pass it on to uh, my colleague, Ioana. Yes, thanks, Eve. So we had a bit of an overview of the specialized devices. I would like to say a few words about accessible reading on smartphones. Um, as we already mentioned, the advantage of using mainstream devices is you can do many things with one. And I, I'm telling you, I love my iPhone. If I could cook or clean my house with the iPhone, I would. But uh, in any case, one of the extra functions that is worthwhile noting when you are learning to use a smartphone is something that is also indirectly related to accessible reading. And I'd like to talk about the app Be My Eyes. This app is very helpful and it exists also on iOS, so on the Apple devices and also on uh, Google Android operating system phones. And this app, what it does is connect, it connects people that need sighted assistance with volunteers around the world that, uh, and so you can start a video call anytime, night or day. And uh, I have used them many a time when I needed to quickly know what was in my mail. It was faster than trying to scan the page uh, or just knowing what kind of tea I'm putting in my, in, I'm preparing. So it, it is a really useful app if you're gonna learn how to use a smartphone and if you're starting out or are with a print disability. Um, as I already mentioned a little bit, we have two main operating systems. We have the iOS and Android for Apple and Google respectively, and each offers advantages and disadvantages. So Apple offers a very uh, robust user interface and it's very nicely standardized. So if you know how to operate one part of the, of the phone, you can extrapolate and everything works pretty much in the same way and everything works well and it's smooth, um, the smooth user experience. The disadvantage also becomes its own disadvantage because you have less flexibility in customizing the phone according to your needs. So this is where Android, if you are interested in the, having more flexibility and more choice in, in the design, even the physical design of your phone, you have some much more options and they're also less expensive than the iPhones in general. That being said, um, the problem with Android is that the uh, operating system is more of fragmented. So things are not all Android phones are created equal. Some things will work better on one phone than on another. So there is more experimentation and research to be done if you want to go the Android route. Now I would like to discuss uh, in general all the different accessibility settings that you can expect to find in, uh, in, um, in mainstream devices and smartphones. Uh, we have the screen readers, that we have the, the speech settings, and I will discuss all of them in more detail shortly. Um, these both pertain to people with uh, visual disabilities. Uh, we have also for low vision uh, users, settings for uh, display accommodations of so changing font size or font. Uh, we have um, the magnifier that 
allows you to uh, enlarge uh, printed information using your camera. You can also just use a, an enlarged font on your screen, which is called Zoom. For motor disabilities, you have uh, the voice control setting that allows you to control your devices using only your voice. And uh, all these settings work in different flavors and implementations on both Apple and Android devices. The screen readers. Um, the general function of a screen reader is to read out loud the information that's presented on the screen. Um, for smartphones and for touchscreen devices, um, they do this by completely changing the way you interact with the screen. The gestures that are being used are, are altered. We have two main screen readers, VoiceOver for um, the Apple ecosystem and TalkBack for the Android phones. Um, how and, and the, the way the interaction is changed is that uh, rather than, it allows you to touch the screen and the information that is under your finger is going to be read out loud. And uh, later on, you will see this screen reader in action in a demo. Um, the, there is also a very useful setting that allows you to read continuously. So let's say you want to read a longer block of text, like an article or a web page or even a digital book. You can perform a special gesture and the smart device will start reading continuously so you can relax and enjoy your book. Um, if a touch screen is intimidating or if you have trouble using it, um, you can perform all of the commands specific to the voiceover or talkback screen reader um, by connecting a Bluetooth keyboard. And that is very practical for people with uh, motor disability. Um, for the low vision accommodation, we have the, as I already briefly mentioned, the large font. Android here, as we can see, has more flexibility. Android allows you to actually change the font completely, so you can use a font that is more legible and suited to your needs. You can adjust contrast, you can change colors, um, you can uh, uh, basically adjust the screen in, in ways that make it easier for you to, to read. The speech options are very interesting and they are useful either for low vision people or for people that have a learning um, disability or comprehension disability. And you can wonder why do I need speech accommodations instead of screen readers? And the truth is that sometimes um, you might be tired reading your screen and you can quickly invoke some gestures that allow you to read either a specific sentence or to read the text that's under your finger or basically just invoke um, the ability to read content on your screen without changing the whole interaction of your phone. So that's a very useful option that only need this sporadically. We have the magnifier um, and that's very useful. And even people that have no print disability, I know my husband who's sighted often uses the magnifier just to read small print on, on uh, medicine labels and such. So it's a very, very useful feature. And uh, now I wanted to pass it on to my colleague Rosalie to talk about motor um, accommodations. Okay, so um, reduced mobility accommodations. Um, I will be talking about um, how to use them with computers and with your um, smart devices. So users with mobility disabilities use assistive technologies to access computers and touchscreen devices, such as an alternative keyboard. Um, examples of that could be like a one-handed keyboard, a larger keyboard for those with maybe fine motor or tremors, I personally use a smaller keyboard and uh, which is also flat so that I can accommodate my uh, motor disability. Um, you can use the sticky keys feature, which is um, a feature that allows you to not have to hold down multiple keys at once. So let's say you're doing um, control alt delete and you uh, don't have use of both hands or it's difficult while well, the sticky keys features allows you to click control followed by alt and then followed by the lead and, and hold those down and do that option. 
and you turn it on and off quite easily. Um, there are also alternative mouse inputs. So if a traditional mouse is too difficult, uh, you can have just the track ball, uh, which is you know, a little ball that you roll around, um, or a touchpad, which we find on a lot of laptops actually. Um, then we have things called switches. And a switch um, is kind of like a mouse and you connect it to your device um, and it's programmed to do um, different tasks. And so on my right, um, the right of the screen, I've inserted an image of different types of switches. You can have round switches with different colors uh, for different um, devices. And you can have um, a switch device that is all inclusive and so has multiple switches on one kind of face. And then you have a joystick type switch um, that uh, can be used to navigate maybe if pressing is a little difficult for you. Um, then uh, people can use eye tracking technology. So if you have no use of any sort of um, limbs at all, you can just use your eyes to use your computer or use your phone that um, requires a download of a software. Um, and then you can use your wheelchair joystick. Um, if you connect a, an adapter into your wheelchair joystick, you're able to use your joystick um, to be able to navigate your phone and your computer as well. And then finally, sip and puff technology. Um, some people use um, a sip and puff technology to drive their chairs. And what that is, is it's a straw looking device that comes out and you either blow in or you blow out, sorry, or you suck in to make your wheelchair go back and forth. Well, you can use that um, same device to um, navigate your devices. And so when it comes to reading, you're able to um, access digital files more easily. Then we'll move on to e-readers. Um, e-readers are great for those who are having a difficult time transitioning from print to digital with a more paper-like screen. Um, it's nice and lightweight and has touch screen for those who can't push down on buttons as easily. However, um, all of them do have a power button um, that may be a little bit difficult to press, but once it's on, um, it's all touch screen and it's uh, quite uh, handy. Uh, then you can load books onto it, or you can purchase book. Depending on the e-reader, you may be able to load a library book, but um, some might take a little bit of finagling and it might not be an option for, for everyone. Um, you can adjust the font, the contrast, and the brightness. This is great if you have low vision and or if you're reading in different settings, like outside or um, maybe at night, if you're I have a partner sleeping next to you and you don't want to turn on the light, it's great for that. Um, you have the option to use the open dyslexic font. The open dyslexic font uh, was created for people with dyslexia to be able to track letters better and to be able to read in a more um, continuous manner. Um, it's also great um, if you have a um, a document, you can have, ask someone to put it in open dyslexic font to help you uh, to read that. And then a uh, great thing about the e-readers, it's a distraction-free reading option. So um, either whether you have it online or not, um, there won't be notifications popping in and um, it, it's really just there to read. So it's a lot more like a book as opposed to your phone or your iPad, which yes, you can put on Do Not Disturb, but it's still, you have the option to go off and do other things, which I myself uh, do have ADHD. And so I find that if I'm on my phone, I'm gonna get distracted and I'm gonna wanna do other things. So the e-reader is a great option for me. And then we'll talk a little bit about voice control. That is on your uh, touch screen devices as well as your computers. It allows a hands-free use of your phone. Um, you can use words or numbers to identify what you want to select. And uh, assistants like Siri and Google Assistant can really be great to open apps uh, and uh, other things. So here's a little example of what uh, the voice control uh, screen kind of looks like. So it's, uh, you have a bunch of tags for whichever app that you wanna open. So you can choose to use 
tags that are names or tags that are numbered. And so you would tell your device, uh, open one or click on one, click on two. And then you have the grid option, which is also numbered. And some people find that it's easier for um, more precise um, selection. Um, so you have a grid of about, I would say maybe 24 um, options there. Smart speakers are another great option for reading when you have mobility issues. A smart speaker is an internet enabled speaker that is controlled with spoken commands. Um, you have uh, options, multiple options, but maybe two of the more popular ones, maybe the Amazon Echo or the Google Home. Um, I personally find it great if I'm in a position where I can't reach my phone or I can't reach an e-reader, I can just ask my smart speaker to start reading a book and, um, and it will, so it's great um, for that. I'll pass it back over to my colleague, Eve. Thank you very much, uh, Rosalie. Uh, previously, uh, you want to talk, talk to us about uh, screen reading software, so I won't repeat what that is, but I will give you some examples under Windows. Probably the one that is the most known is JAWS. It's been around forever, uh, even in the DOS days. Um, and uh, another option that is available now is NVDA, which is accomplishing pretty much the same task, except that it's free, uh, which is a huge, a huge advantage for some people. And there's also Narrator, uh, which is integrated into the Windows operating system. I wouldn't say that it is as powerful as JAWS and or NVDA, but uh, they are making progress. It's a little bit more robust than it was uh, when it was first uh, introduced. Um, on the um, Apple side, uh, obviously there's VoiceOver, um, which is uh, interesting because it is part of the operating system. Uh, so when the operating system is updated, uh, so is uh, VoiceOver, hopefully with uh, not too many bugs, but uh, they're usually resolved uh, pretty quickly. On the magnification side, uh, under Windows, we have Zoom Text, which is also quite uh, known by people. And also Fusion, Fusion being a combination between Zoom Text and JAWS, which makes it possible for someone with uh, low vision to um, take a break uh, and to rest their eyes by listening to the text being read by the JAWS portion of, uh, of uh, Fusion, especially if it's a long uh, document that might uh, be quite handy to, to do. Um, Text-to-speech options uh, are also developed by uh, Kurzweil. Uh, the package that is uh, most well-known is uh, the Kurzweil 3000. And basically, um, this is being used by uh, persons with print disabilities, and it's essentially voicing web-based content, uh, digital text, or scan text. And once it is being voiced by Kurzweil 3000, you can save it as an MP3 file, and then you can uh, put it on your smartphone, your tablet, and you could listen to it anywhere, basically. You don't have to be tied down to your computer. Um, now that we've looked at all these uh, options uh, that are available, uh, now it's time to put them to good use. Uh, so let me talk a little bit about uh, the different uh, uh, library services that are um, available. Um, let's uh, start uh, to mention that uh, more than likely you would need a library card, obviously, to access the different libraries. Some of them will accept um, a self-declaration of a print disability. Uh, others, you will need to uh, provide a proof uh, of disability. 
completed by a doctor or um, a professional. Um, if we look at SILA, um, uh, the um, uh, members or patrons and libraries uh, that are affiliated have access to books, newspapers, and magazines, and that is available in different formats, uh, audio, daisy, digital text, braille, print braille picture books so as you can see there's a there's a var variety of, of options available and um, these books and magazines can also be directly downloaded to uh, a daisy uh, player uh, such as the one that uh, that i've shown you uh, before um, the Bookshare service provides also access to uh, books for school, work, and leisure. Uh, these books from Bookshare are audio-based uh, and they are rendered by a synthesized uh, speech, uh, synthesized voice. It's not human narration that is, uh, that is provided. Uh, mostly in English, some available in French. Uh, they can be obtained through the Bookshare website or through SILA. Uh, um, but you do need a proof of disability to access them. There's also uh, the National Network of Equitable Library Service, NELS. It has a, a digital collection of, of files that are available either in electronic text or audio <clears throat> formats. Some are um, open access, that is they're in the public domain and anyone can get access to them. Contrary to what's available on SILA, these uh, books um, uh, cannot be sent to uh, patrons on CD. Uh, that's something that I forgot to mention. SILA books are available on CD as well. Um, and uh, maybe a last, uh, and, and you can consult uh, obviously the SILA, the, Nell's uh, website for uh, more information on what's available. The last uh, service that I would like to mention briefly is the SQLA, which is uh, Service Québécois du Livre Adapté. And um, it's based in the province of Quebec with a partnership uh, between uh, SQLA and SILA. The books are made available to uh, francophones outside of uh, Quebec. Books again are available in uh, audio and daisy formats, uh, electronic text, CD, direct to players. Um, so they have a, a huge collection of books that are available. Um, so uh, that's, uh, it for me. So uh, back to Joanna. So now that we discussed a bit of the specialized libraries, I wanted to discuss what options we have in the mainstream mainstream uh, range of uh, accessible reading options. Uh, Audible is the first one that comes to mind. It is a huge collection of books from current bestsellers to classic books, and they're human narrated. Um, this is a service that you can subscribe. You can have a monthly subscription that gives you one or a, a certain number of books per month. Um, this is owned by Amazon, so then interesting. So it works very well on also on smart speakers from Amazon. And um, I would have to say though that it is always good practice if you are already a member of Sila or of. If you have a membership to a public library, sometimes they have agreements with Audible. So if you're interested in a book from Audible, first check your library and see if they have it, because you might be able to get away without having to purchase it. Um, Kindle is, in a way, the digital equivalent of Audible. Uh, Kindle is a book service from Amazon that you can buy books in text format, and you have all sorts of books. Some might be free, but most of them are paid. And they have a very inter interesting integration with Audible that allows you to, for example, if you are willing to buy the book in both text and audio format, you can start it 
uh, as an audiobook, and then you can pick up later on your screen to read it digital, digitally as a text, and they, it will be all synced seamlessly. So that's an interesting option. Overdrive is a service that allows you to connect remotely to your public libraries and download uh, material from them. Um, a word about the Overdrive app, unfortunately, um, it will be discontinued, but they have a successor, which is Libby, and that one is, as of now, less accessible, but they promise that they will release very soon an update that supposedly fixes all these issues. So let's hope that this option will be available for a larger variety of users. Uh, LibriVox is an interesting option for people that uh, this is a collection of books in the public domain, so they are free. You can download them in all sorts of formats, and because they are not copyright protected, you can even burn them onto a CD. Basically, you have a lot of flexibility. They are read by volunteers, and you have books in multiple languages. And uh, so these are the main um, sources of mainstream um, accessible reading. Um, a few words about the DAISY format. We mentioned it briefly. DAISY is a specialized format used by, by uh, libraries that produce materials, especially for people with print disabilities. disabilities. And um, DAISY stands for Digital Access Information System. What this allows us is to have a very good way to navigate books from heading to heading. You can jump to a specific chapter, even sentence by sentence. So it gives you a very flexible way to interact with your books. And again, you will see this in action when I demonstrate the use of a DAISY app. Um, so all these different services, each of them comes with their own app or software implementation. Audible has their Audible app and it works both for um, Android and iOS. And you can also listen onto your, on your computer. Kindle, the same. Um, we have also the Apple Books if you have an iOS device, so you can purchase books from them. And you have the uh, equivalent, which is Google Play for Android. Uh, a few words about now about the specialized players that play DAISY format. I want to start with the Easy Reader, which is a, a DAISY player for uh, both for iOS and uh, Android. And where this app shines is in its very seamless integration with libraries such as Sela in terms of downloading books. You can just uh, very easily search a book and select it, and then it very immediately appears on your device and is ready to be listened to. Um, the app that is my app of choice, personally, for reading books in DAISY format is the Voice Dream Reader. This is a very uh, powerful app. It actually was created originally with uh, people with uh, learning disabilities in mind, so it has a host of adaptations in terms of changing font, uh, using a focused reading mode, all sorts of uh, adaptations spe geared specifically for people with dyslexia or with other uh, comprehension disabilities. And of course, it has a very clean and powerful interface um, for people using screen readers. And I would like to show you this app in action. Open Voice Dream. Voice Dream Reader, add button. As you can see, when I first opened the app, the focus for voiceover lands on the add button. So if I now double tap the screen, add, add document, heading. We will be presented with the list of all the various options I have for adding books to this app. Close button scanner. Scanner allows me to uh, take a picture of a printed page and have it read out. File browser. File browser allows me to browse for a file that's located either on the phone or online. 
Clip Bookshare. I also have Bookshare and Sila. Sila configured. So if I tapped on Sila, I would be brought to the web page where I can search for books and add as if I was on a web page. I already have the book I want to show you on my phone, so I will return there. Add button. 21 lesson search. Tw now reading. 21 lessons for the tw now read library button. I can now find the play button either by swiping right until I reach the play control. Document control audio setting visual settings. But I also know where it is on the screen. Play button adjustable. So I touched it and brought the focus there. Now I can double tap. Secularism is sometimes defined as the negation of religion, and secular people are therefore carried through. As you can hear, this is a synthesized voice because the text that I have loaded is a digital text, so it's not human narrated. I can change the speed by finding the audio settings, where I can also change the voice that the reader will Library, use. Document, controls, audio settings, button, adjustable. Adjustable means that I can swipe up or down and change the speed. 230 words per minute, 210 words per minute. So now I'm slowing it minute. down. Another great option that to my knowledge is unique to this Play, player. Button, adjust, select text, starting yeah. with secularism. So it's the ability to select text and it tells me which word starts selecting. So I will start selecting with the word secularism. I'm swiping added. down to increase the selection. Now if I double tap. Secularism is sometimes defined as the secularism is sometimes. So I have these words selected and I can create a note, um, share this, um, make a highlight and all sorts of other options. So it's great for an in-depth interaction with a book. Copy, cancel, button. I play, can button, also adjustable. Play, view button, the select headings, bookmarks, and highlights button. Locations, I can also heading. view the structure of the book by tapping the headings, bookmarks, and highlights button. Close, selected, headings, but bookmarks, but highlights, heading level, level cover, level one, other titles, level title page, level one, copyright, level dedication, level one. So I would tap anywhere Dedication, level one. and it will start reading husband, from there. Isaac, to my mother, Nina, and to my grandmother, Fanny. So this is a quick overview of the Voice Dream Reader app. Okay, so to conclude really quickly, just so we can get to questions, um, we just want to say that adapting to a print disability or even any change in living circumstance is daunting. And while it's tempting to stick to familiar ways of doing things, it's going to become less and less efficient, especially if a disability should progress. So we hope that this webinar, although it didn't cover absolutely everything, because if it did, we'd be here for five hours. Um, we hope that it encouraged you to kind of face the learning curve and with support from professionals and peers um, to kind of explore uh, options that are out there for you and not to resign yourself to the limitations of old ways that might no longer be helpful to you. So now we're gonna move on to questions. Um, we have a couple of questions in the chat. Um, I'm just going to stop the sharing. Okay, and I'm going to read the questions aloud and whoever might have the answer will just jump in and answer that. And then we will answer um, raised hands will give you the ability to talk. So um, someone said, I think, I believe I'm at the first, uh, I'm just gonna go right up to the top here. Which programs or devices have the best voices? My teen hates the robotic voices. Do we have an answer? Um, I'll take that one. I think it, the answer depends a little bit on what kind of device you use, but I can say that if you are using a smartphone, the Voice Dream Reader app has a huge selection of voices that you can buy, or um, so you can have more vo voices available. Again, there are the acapella voices and other voices that are pretty high quality, so they 
but you know, of course, they they will not be great actors. So you, you might not want to read Shakespeare with these voices, but mm -hmm. but they they do the job, and um, you can buy them also for the computer. And so I think a cappella stands out for me. Um, there are a bunch of other ones, but you experiment with all the voices available on your device, and you might find one that works for you. This is a very personal choice. So somebody might love, love one voice and somebody else would hate it. Um, Eve, any yeah. other ideas? Yeah, well, I tend to agree with you. Uh, there's Ivona voices, uh, Nuance. Uh, there, there's quite a few. So most of them, you are able to hear a sample of what they would sound like, albeit a short one, but at least it can give you an idea. And it is a matter of uh, user preference, definitely. Okay, and then we had a comment that I wanted to point out um, saying most provinces or some provinces do not have accessible device program. So not everyone can access the required equipment. And that is absolutely fair, yes, I believe maybe the three of us might come from provinces where we do have subsidization available. Um, but yes, in, in some provinces, there, there are not necessarily any subsidizations. I do want to mention um, CNIB, the Lion's Eye Bank, um, will often subsidize things. There are different um, options other than just your provincial subsidization. So um, it might take some research, unfortunately, um, but yeah. It is, it is good to keep in mind. Um, I believe we answered if we can play DAISY files from an iPad, and that's by using um, one of the apps that was mentioned, like Voice Dream Reader or um, Easy Reader, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. um, if I choose to use my Android phone, what is the choice I make when asked what format I want to use? Um, I'm not sure about that question. I, I'm not, I think that most formats that are available for iOS are available for Android also. I would just say that if you choose to go on Android, I would recommend that you stick to phones like Samsung or Pixel, just because uh, that was not your question, but it just brings me to an advice about Android because they are more robust and better user interface, but they're I think that all formats that you can read on the iPhone or others, you can read on iOS. There are just different apps. The Voice Dream Reader app has an equivalent Legere or Leger in um, on the Android side. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, someone asked if it's possible to get one-on-one -on -one training courses for various technologies for low vision people. Depending on the province, um, there's vision uh, vision loss rehab, um, which is a division of CNIB, and they off will have accessibility um, trainers. Um, however, it's not, again, it's not gonna be available in every province and in every um, branch of CNIB. Um, sometimes maybe reaching out to um, a local organization, disability organization, might be able to hook you up with someone who can help you um, with technology, even if it's not a a, uh, an expert. I mean, we all become experts when we use the device, right? So maybe it's someone who has experience using the device. Um, that's the advice I would give for that. I would add that, yeah. oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Yeah, I would add that uh, don't underestimate the power of communities, um, mm -hmm. like mailing lists and things. And you might find people that actually give training. So sometimes they might charge, but some will do it for free. And in this era of COVID um, remote learning has come a long way. So maybe you can find somebody that can help you with a specific problem or actually give you help uh, if you look for low vision groups or where you can uh, find answers to the questions you seek. Mm -hmm. um, someone asked, how do I activate voiceover when I have an attachment? Um, I believe you would just go to your accessibility settings in your phone and um, you can choose to create a certain gesture that will allow you to open voiceover either by clicking the um, lock button a few times or just any any gesture uh, you want actually. Right, you wanna? You, wanna you can use it? assistive touch if you have any trouble activating those, but my method of choice, the easiest thing is to ask Siri to turn on and off voiceover. 
and uh, that will be probably the easiest way to accomplish this. If You're right, I'm making it so complicated. <laughs> <laughs> but I then can't. again, you know. Well, yeah, no, I, I know I tend to make things complicated for myself. Um, so someone says they hate using Cursewell 3000. And Ooh. do we have any other recommendations? Well, um, I did a really quick Google search and um, there is um, a thing called Balabolka that seems to be able to um, uh, also save text files as MP3, MP4s or WAV files, anything you want. Um, but we're going to add a link to a resource page that will be going up um, to show what um, alternatives might be available for you. Um, again, or a simple Google search too sometimes can help you find alternatives. And I think it's also going to come down to trying different things. Um, and you might be able to find uh, free uh, options that are just as good because Crystal uh, tends to run pretty expensive. And obviously with the time we had, we couldn't necessarily cover, you know, everything that is out there, nor that perhaps do we know of everything that is out there because there's uh, new advancements all the time, you know, but uh, as Rosalie said, uh, a Google search, uh, talking to rehab, CNIB, uh, friends, uh, you know, there, there is various ways of, of, of trying to find out what would work best for you eventually. Okay, someone asked, how can I get step-by-step -step instructions of how to load and navigate books and return books for Victor, Victor Reader? Um, and some, um, one of our coworkers mentioned that there are instructions on how to transfer a book to Astratus on the CELA website. Um, you may be able to find a tutorial on YouTube too if yeah. that helps. The CELA website has uh, different tutorials and uh, FAQs, uh, you know, to assist in doing various things. So that might be a good uh, starting point, uh, indeed. Um, how can francophones outside of Quebec access the SQLA collection, or can they even? Well, they can. Uh, if someone from CELA wants to uh, correct me or give more information, uh, because of the partnership that I mentioned, I, I would uh, uh, think that the books from the um, SQLA collection are already available on, uh, through the CELA website. But if someone wants to jump in from CELA, uh, please uh, do so, but that is my understanding. Hi, that's Rachel. And yes, you're absolutely correct. The books that are in SQLA are in the CELA's website so that you can access English and French contact from SQLA through our site. Thank you, uh, Rachel. Okay. Um, we were asked if we can share the PowerPoint presentation following the session. We, I'm not sure about that. Can maybe Rachel, do you know? if we'll be sharing the PowerPoint presentation? Um, we could post it somewhere and create a link to it if you like, yeah. Okay. Uh, is Voice Dreamer free and is it available for Android as well? Oh, it is not free, but it's, it's a, I think it's around $10 or so, or maybe it changed last since I bought it. Um, I think you will need to buy the add-on if you are interested in scanning documents and it is really a truly powerful scanner also um, like I s mentioned the equivalent for voice stream reader on Android side is called Ledger and it will be part of the resource list I was looking at the ratings I can't say because I don't use Android but the ratings weren't as high on the Android side um, that being said uh, some people were really happy they said that the only reason why they didn't switch from iPhone to Android was because of Voice Dream Reader, and they were very happy to find out that Ledger was now an option for them. Um, someone mentioned the cost, and I believe they're right. I was checking this up. The cost is about twenty-seven ninety-nine or Ooh. twenty some I, odd I guess dollars. It's changed <laughs> since I bought it. There you could yeah, tell. and then add-ons. Add-ons. The cost for add-ons varies, so you're just going to have to look that up and see what what's up with that. We bought it at the right time, uh, Joanna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we were on the cutting edge. <laughs> yeah. And, and maybe and, one, one hint, if I may, 
sometimes, not all the time, but uh, around Christmas time, some companies will have discounted prices on various apps. So it may be a good time to go in the app store and look um, because uh, I've seen it on a few occasions uh, as a Christmas or New Year's, you know, a gift to uh, to people, uh, they will reduce the price of the apps. So it might be a good time to look for them. Unfortunately, you've just missed it, but uh, next year maybe. <laughs> um, and does the app work for text in other languages? Yes, absolutely. It, yeah. Okay, great. Um, so. Yeah, I read in Romanian and all sorts of languages. Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, totally. Okay. Someone has asked if we know where we can access human narrated university textbook, it's either existing or where can they pay to have them read to them? Huh. That's a really good question. Uh, I know that you can send book suggestions, but um, I'm not sure how quick Sila would be to translate those, if at all. It depends, I guess, on their book priority. I know that some disability uh, organizations can help with um, potentially, I know that I got help when I was in high school in converting material for school for accessibility, but I'm afraid I don't know. Um, it looks like so Virginia I, might have the answer. Her hand is up. Do you have an answer, Virginia? Or no? Nah, no You're muted. <laughs> <laughs> so Virginia should be able to talk now. Okay. Oh, yeah. So I believe PAL, which is a, an organization that uh, Rachel had already mentioned in the chat, um, from what I understand, they primarily do textbooks, like a lot of educational material, and they will do it on demand. So it's P-A-L. Um, I can't remember what that stands for, but if you uh, Google it and also... Uh, Rachel had posted in the chat the link to that as well. So um, as far as I know, and Rachel, you may know better than me, uh, I think they do on-demand uh, recordings, audio recordings of items, and primarily I think it's often textbooks for um, students. That's my understanding too. They'll take anything and record it for you. Um, and it's for free as well. I'll post the link again in the chat, just so it's here. And uh, just a comment about textbooks. Um, usually it's the, the university or college or, or school um, resources that will um, provide an alternative format uh, copy of the book for you. They may go through provincial educational resources. So for example, in Ontario, uh, it's an organization through the Ministry of Education called AERO, A-E-R-O. So it's best if you need a, a textbook um, to go to student services or ask your teacher how it could be made into an alternative format. And sorry, just one last thing. Um, so Sila does not have textbooks. So you wouldn't really want to submit a title suggestion for that. So it's best to go to, to someone at your, your school and ask them. Okay. Um, I'm going to take a just a quick break from the chat questions and go to some of the in-person questions just because people have had their hands up for a bit. So we're going to start with, um, unfortunately, just says Galaxy Tab S3. So you're allowed, you, I have, uh, you need to unmute yourself, but you can go ahead once you do that. And unmute is, does anyone know what the shortcut? Alt A. And if you don't have a question anymore, um, just lower your hand, please. Okay, so we're gonna move on to Ian Gorman. Um, please unmute yourself. And if you don't have a question, oh yeah, go ahead. I accidentally raised the hand and then lowered it. I didn't have a question. Okay, okay great, okay. Um, okay, next is going to be John Marion. You had your hand up and unless that was a mistake, then I can lower your hand. 
John Marriott. Okay, in the interest of time, I'm just going to move on um, to Susan Gibbon. Um, what was your question? No, you already answered my question. Okay, great. Earlier, thank you. Nice. Okay, great. Um, okay, then we have Ivy Matuk. You're muted, and if you've answered your question, can you let us know? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Yeah. Okay. I've. Oh, uh, it's it's banging. Huh? Yeah. Oh, it's. Oh, there we go. It stopped. Oh. I don't know why it's doing that. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, I'll ask the question anyway. I've been using the Victor Stream Reader with downloads from Scylla directly. I recently put on my iPhone the Easy Reader. Can I have downloads on both the Vector Stream Reader and the iPhone, or I have to, how do I choose if it's going to one of them or the other? You can have it on both, I believe, right? On your Victor Reader and your Easy Reader, right? You can, yes. You, you can download it to both devices. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, now we're going to go to Lynn German. Yep. <clears throat> Hello, I'm moving from Ontario to Alberta. And I just wondered if I have to do anything more than provide a change of address to continue receiving um, books on CD. From CELA? From CELA, yes. No, no as far as I know, uh, just uh, advise them of your change of address and uh, you, you should be good to go to continue receiving books on CDs. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. And then we've got Linda Raby. Yes, hi, thank you. I just wanted to know what gesture you do use to perform the, the continuous reading. You said it was a really simple gesture, but what is it? Um, it is on iOS. You flick down on the screen with two fingers. That's right. And then this starts reading from wherever your focus was. If you want to go from the top of the article, you go, you flick up with two fingers and it does the same thing, except that it starts from the beginning, no matter, no matter where you were before. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Welcome. Okay. And then we've got Wendy Sudabi. Sudabi? Sorry if I'm butchering names here. That's okay. Sudabi. Okay. Um, I have been using Easy Reader um, in order to listen to books, but what I have been finding is that after about a month, it stops reading it. And so then I have been uninstalling, reinstalling, downloading again, everything. Um, but that's getting really tedious. Is there an alternative to Easy Reader Dolphin? I suppose that would be the voice stream reader if you're willing to. Spend... But I have Android. I don't have. Oh, Android. Leggeri. Legger or whatever. I think Leggeri is in Italian to write, read. Anyway, Legger, and we will provide the link in the resource list, is an app that reads Daisy books and basically does all that. On, uh, on Android. So are you going to um, send that in an email? Um, you said that you would provide a link. I'm just wondering where I'm gonna find that. Uh, that I, hmm, I'm less sure exactly of the logistics, maybe Rachel or somebody from CELA can confirm how this will work. 
Yeah, we'll post a link to those resources on our website. Um, the, the specific spot is yet to be determined, uh, but we will be sending a email to everyone with a link to the survey and um, hopefully by then we'll have the resources up so you'll be able to find it uh, through the, um, hopefully through the email that contains the survey and um, we can also feature it in our next open book um, issue as well. I'll make a note to do that. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, um, and then we've got um, Andrew Scott Reed. Yes, I got a quick, uh, quick comment and a quick question. Uh, I've been, I'm, I just turned 70 years old. I've been using registered with the CNIB in the old days when we used the four track tape and went through all the other formats. My question is this, my vision is low. So what I use is I usually download from CELA my books in Word format simply because I can enlarge the print on the screen using a big screen and read it well. So my question is, are Word format going to be expanded? It's, or I'm hoping that it's not going to be uh, phased out or something because I love that format because I love to read my own material. Is this a question for CELA maybe? Like is Word format gonna make it gonna stay or is it gonna be expanded? I think it's likely it's, going to stay. Exactly, Good. that's what I was going to say too, that um, all the Bookshare books in our collection are in Word and we're gradually getting more and more books in, our, in CELA's collection in Word. So definitely it's here to stay. And by the way, I use a, uh, I also use a Motorola Hyper One Android phone, and I've had no issues with uh, the software that you people have been talking about. It works oh, flawlessly. Well, that's good to know. Definitely. Inclu yeah. Including yeah. Dolphin Reader, uh, Easy Reader. Mm -hmm. I just, I was going to make a comment actually about that. So we have made uh, Dolphin, the company that makes Easy Reader, aware of the issues that um, the other person was talking about. So they're working on a fix for those issues where uh, the player just stops all of a sudden uh, and some other issues as well. So so we're aware of it and uh, we've let the, the vendor know. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you. And then we've got Selena Trigiani. Oh, <clears throat> there we go. Um, hi there. So I guess um, one of my, well, actually two questions, and one of them I did um, <clears throat> post in the chat, and I'll ask both questions, and then um, I'll allow you to answer both. My first question, Eve, you were mentioning a Braille display um, that has a QWERTY keyboard, and... Um, which uh, seems to be a really good option for those of us like myself. I have a Braille display with a Perkins keyboard, um, but um, I'm more comfortable on the um, QWERTY keyboard. And I'm wondering what the name of that display was. Um, my other question is in regards to SQLA. Um, I also speak French and I want to be able to uh, read more content in French. So my question, kind of a twofold uh, question, one of them is, is all of the material on SQLA um, available through CELA? And my other question is, um, is it only the audio books that are available in uh, through CELA uh, from SQLA or, or other uh, formats available as well. So I'll I'll, I'll let uh, I'll let you uh, answer both questions. Thank you so much. Well, thank thank you. Um, regarding the Braille display, the one I'm using is a Perkins style keyboard, but I think, and uh, any one of the panelists can uh, chime in, but I think the Braille Note Touch has a uh, standalone. QWERTY keyboard, and there might be others. To be totally honest with you, I would have to do a bit of research to find exactly which models have it. Uh, there probably is more than one. One other suggestions that I might make to you would be to check with 
the various vendors um, of Braille uh, displays, um, humanware being one of them, and obviously mm -hmm. there are others. Um, so, I, you know, like I wouldn't want to mislead you and tell you that one has it and uh, only to find out that it doesn't. Um, so, you know, that would be my suggestion on that. Um, and if you're not able to find it, you you could, I suppose, call us um, on the peer trainer uh, phone line and uh, we, you know, could try to help you out with researching that. Regarding the SELA collection, and again, Rachel can assist me, I think that all the collection is available and um, I would think that it would extend uh, beyond audiobooks. I think that it would include um, Braille books as well, but I'm not entirely sure on that. Awesome. Thank you so much. You're quite welcome. Um, before we get to that, I want to, the Mantis is the newest Braille display that came out and it's for, uh, with a QWERTY keyboard. The Braille note is more of a note taker, so it might have all sorts of uh, functions that not everybody needs in terms of standalone applications, but the Mantis is mainly a Braille display um, and has a QWERTY keyboard. With yeah. very, and that's from, it's pretty new, so maybe there are cheaper options, but uh, this one is definitely the latest buzz um, and it's available from APH, uh, and it's distributed by Humanware. Okay, um, so we're gonna have to wrap it up real quick because we're now going into 20 minutes past the time. Um, I have one more question here. Can I download a book on my desktop and then transfer to my phone? The phone print can be difficult to use. Does anyone have an answer for that? It, I think it depends on the phone that you have. It is yeah. much easier to do this on Android because then you stick the phone, you connect it with a cable and it shows up like a drive for your yeah. computer and you can then place it there. With uh, iOS, what you need to do is probably the easiest thing. If you happen to have an online file service such as Dropbox, Dropbox yeah. or other ones, then you can put the files there in your computer and access them through your phone. There are other options, but that's one of the problems with iOS. It, it, it is a bit more of a tight system that is not so flexible. Okay. Eve, any then, other tips? Sorry, no, uh, you, you've covered it exactly. A file sharing option, uh, you know, might be the, 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 the way to go. It's, it's, it's unfortunate that the iPhone is still uh, a closed system more or less. It's easier to do stuff like that on Android. But, uh, there are ways around it, like uh, you want to mention uh, file sharing uh, being one of them. Okay, um, so one last, sorry, one, this is the last one, I swear. Um, will the Zoom recording be available for uh, people? Rachel, I think this is for you. Yes, definitely, we'll make the recording available. Okay, great. So that I think ends our presentation. Thank you so much everyone who joined. And if there are questions that were unanswered, you know, again, like we said, Google is a wonderful, powerful thing, or you can even um, just call your local CNIB. They might have answers for you. Or you can call CELA if it's a CELA related question. We have a contact center um, and our number is on the website. I don't know it off offhand, but um, so thank you so much for joining us today and uh, uh, you'll get information on how to access this presentation, the survey, and then our resource list. Oh, the phone number is now in the chat um, shortly. We should mention um, yeah, 855 and um, as well, I want to thank you for your participation. Uh, hope uh, you found something useful out of it. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Okay.